Bill Hanbury is the CEO of United Way, and the group is sponsoring the Sisterhood Summit in Prince George's County. Angela also Brooks is the daughter of Prince George's County, and she is the county's first woman to be elected state's attorney. Welcome both to Thank A you. Different Look. Thank you so much for having us. So tell us how the idea came to have this Sisterhood Summit. It's the first of its kind in the county, right? It is. It's the first of its kind. And, you know, I have grown increasingly concerned about our young women in the county. I have noticed that women uh, are not only victims of crime, but we have noticed this very perilous trend where women are also the perpetrators of violence against each other. Um, the incivility has concerned me. The violence has concerned me. And so we started thinking, what can we do? What can we do? And so uh, we were very fortunate to, uh, to have a discussion with the United Way. They came on right away and said, you know what, we want to be the premier sponsor for this, um, as they were already doing this sort of work in our community. And we want to reach out to young women and prevent them from coming to the criminal justice system in the first place. You know, we're excited to support Angela. She's a great role model for other women in the county, mm -hmm. and we are, uh, we're glad to be a supporter. United Way has already done work in this space with a program called Pathways to Peace, where wow. we've rolled out uh, programs around preventing teen violence and anti-bullying prevention uh, activities um, across middle schools and high schools throughout the county, and we've had some success. There still needs a, a lot more work to be done, and that's why we're glad to, to mm -hmm. collaborate with the county on this. All right, so programs like this are, are not new to you, but you wanted to get involved with this one as well. well we, need a, we need a lot more support to get this message out around mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. And so can you tell me a little bit about what's going to be going on at the uh, Sisterhood Summit? What is it? People want to know. Oh, you know, the Sisterhood Summit is going to be phenomenal. This is, first of all, uh, a partnership. So we'll have a number of individuals who are partnering with us, including the United Way. Uh, we'll have Judge Hatchett who is uh, really a scholar and uh, also uh, has specialized in this area in juvenile justice and social issues. We have Tracy Wilkins from uh, News Channel 4 who gives a wonderful presentation called Surviving the Lows of High School. Uh, we'll be dealing with social media, conflict resolution, self-esteem, and so we have a number of wonderful workshops. Uh, we have professors from Howard University who will be there uh, working okay, as well. Alma <laughs> Your alma mater. But every, we have the faith community has come on board, the Department of Social services and so we'll have wraparound services in addition to the workshops where we want to hear from these young women um, some of the difficulties they are facing we'll be pouring information into them but we want to hear from them as well and we'll have these services mentors will be on hand for the young women so it's going to be a wonderful uh, power pack day um, that we're really excited about we'll also bring along United Way agencies that are already working in this space YWCA, Campfire, Boys and Girls Clubs, who are doing very, very interesting programs, innovative programs at preventing violence in the community. And again, United Way agencies that we support and we believe ought to be a, a big component of this program. So it's just going to be like a big collaboration of a lot yes, of is. organizations yeah. coming together. Yeah. Uh, tell me why that's important and what do you hope for people to take from the Sisterhood Summit? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, United Way, I mean, our, our whole business proposition is around convening and focusing the community around the most compelling challenges that we have. And we honestly believe uh, that teen violence, uh, prevention of bullying, particularly in the school environment, is critical to success, academic success, social success. There's a whole bunch of bad outcomes, we were talking about this mm -hmm. before, a whole bunch of bad outcomes that take place in a child's life if they can't go to school, if they don't want to go to school when they're being bullied or when there's violence in their neighborhood. And it's, it's not a good result, mm -hmm. it's not a good result. And, you know, and for me, we said each week we talk about the, uh, the cases that we see coming through the office, especially rape cases, homicide cases, and I am tired of what I'm seeing. Um, in my mind, the role of a prosecutor mm -hmm. is not simply to prosecute. The role of a prosecutor is to prevent crime in the first place. And so this really is an effort um, to make sure that we are preventing crime, that we are allowing these young women um, to be able to contribute eventually to our community in a very meaningful way. And it starts with us pouring into them, investing in them, uh, and the recognition that we don't do it alone which is why the United Way has become an important partner, which is why the county government has become an important partner, but it is our collective responsibility, I believe, to invest in the young people in our community. Right, I think you made an important, uh, an important point that you, know, you don't wanna just prosecute 
prosecute people and put them away like you know you want to prevent the crime from happening you don't want to just put people away that's not like what you want to do you want to keep the county safe but you also want to prevent it you want to keep people from ever having to start to do those things that get them in trouble in the first place well oh, absolutely by the time they've reached me in many cases it's too late someone has been injured someone's been killed there's a crime that has been committed and so the, the role really, like I say, of the prosecutor is to prevent it, to keep our community safe, to make sure that we enjoy the quality of life that we expect not only for ourselves but for our children. And that means we go to them. We don't, I don't want to wait for them to come to me. I'm going to them. And, uh, and we are so excited um, about the opportunity not just to speak to the women on that day because if we only talk to them, we've failed. Mm -hmm. um, but instead, we want to offer resources that extend beyond the summit. And so the, 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 you know, the, the point is that United Way will be there for them after the summit. Are there going to be some, you know, some call to action, something where they will go and do something after the summit is over? There certainly will be a call to action with United Way agencies where, we tr where we'll try to personally engage individuals in remediation programs that are taking place uh, within Boys and Girls Clubs, Campfire, YMC, YWCA, all doing good programs on the ground day in and day out to prevent teen violence, to assure that women have the have respectable uh, relationships, um, that they're not in ne negative relationships that can cause harm to them. Um, I, I think the thoughts about um, kids having records um, is is a disastrous situation because so many employers. Uh, it's a non-starter for an employer if a, if a if a young person has a record. Um, unless it's expunged, unless there's some kind of remediation, th it's very tough to get a job once you have a record. And we, we want to prevent that. I think Angela's point is, is well taken, that we got to get in there before that happens. Once they go see the prosecutor, there's already a lot of trouble in their lives. Uh -huh. And I'm, no, I, I, I'm sure there were some specific cases that probably led to you wanting to have this. Maybe, you, you know, I'm, I read the uh, press release, you know, about acid throwing, about, you know, there was a stabbing at a college. Can you talk about, like, what, you know, what that does when you have to deal with those types of cases? Oh, it's heartbreaking. I have to tell you, it is heartbreaking um, to watch. You mentioned the acid throwing case, uh, a young woman who, Tamara Jackson, uh, who was convicted of engaging a friend to throw acid in the face of a woman and her three-year-old child. And the women we're dealing with, not only Tamara Jackson, um, the young woman from Bowie State University who's accused of killing her roommate, these are intelligent women from great families. And so we sometimes envision that the young people we deal with are uh, young people who have gotten off track. No, these are straight-A students uh, who have had the best of their communities, who come from wonderful families, and somehow we're still losing them. And so there's something deeper there, and we have to go to it and, and, and hear from the young women to, to find a way to address the self-esteem issues. There are so many self-destructive mm -hmm. sort of behaviors that we're seeing, and we want to go to them and find out how can we help, which is why this is, the summit is a start. Like I said, the day is a start. I think that's Bill's point as well. Uh, the United Way will be there with all of its agencies to make sure that the day after the summit, we will still be there for the young women who attend this right, it's summit. Just, it's the beginning, not the it's end. It's the beginning, it is. And if you, if you look across the uh, American society, the lack of civility that exists among kids these days is, is very scary. It's not the same environment that I may have grown up as a young guy. Um, and I think, you know, kids are really struggling with this lack of civility, uh, uh, you know, and, and this proliferation of violence that can take place, not just in the school, in the, in the schoolyard, but also on the Internet. So that exactly. kids can't escape it. They're, they're always 24-7 subjective, subjected to violent behavior. And, and it doesn't have to be, be by being intimidated personally by somebody. It can be on, on Facebook or on a website. Okay. And, uh, that's not a good situation for our children to be in. Yeah, I always say, I don't know what I would have done if I would have grown up when I was, you know, like in middle school and we had, you know, Facebook and Twitter and everything. It was enough to see, you know, people, the young women getting bullied or, you know, just kids in general getting bullied on, on campus. Uh, do you think that there's something special about, you know, young women versus men? I know this is the Sisterhood Summit. You know, I've, there are young boys also getting in trouble, whether it be something, you know, for the young men or is there something specific to women? Are women just, you know, being cruel to each other, well, you know young what, girls? You know, that's what we want to understand. I have spoken now with enough uh, administrators from the school system who have said to me, we can control to some extent the young men that we are seeing. We cannot control the young women. 
we want to understand what this is about. I've heard as well from the Department of Corrections that they are the concern about the women that they see coming. And so we are concerned about our young men. We're concerned about all of our young people. And we intend to make sure that we address the needs of all of them. Um, but on this particular day, what we are seeing is there is something that is going on with our young women that is very disturbing. I think Bill is right about the incivility. On any given day, we screen cases in our district court and it is I have to say two of three cases that we screen will involve some women who are harming each other in some way, generally over a relationship or something else, but they do very destructive things to each other and we, we want to address this. Women are, as well as our young men, the building blocks of a healthy society. We understand the role, the very important role they have played. And if we lose them, I don't know what happens to us as a community. We have to strengthen. Uh, these young women strengthen the young men as well, but all of our young people are very uh, precious to us and we have to do all we can to make sure they're um, supported. Right, now I know you said that, you know, some of these people, they come from good backgrounds, maybe some, you know, not so good backgrounds. Do you ever see any trends in the people who are committing the crimes? Any, any trends that stand out to you in their backgrounds? No, well, you know what, that's what concerns me. It's not what we expect. It's not that they come from any particular kind of background. It, it can be those who are wealthy, those who are not so wealthy, single parent households. We have many who come who have very strong, solid households with both parents present. Um, and so we can't, it's so, you know, it, I think that's part of what's disturbing about it is that there is no trend. It's just that we are seeing among our young people um, this incivility, this violence. They lack the skills um, to resolve violence, uh, to revolve, resolve conflicts nonviolently, and it's very disconcerting. And I also think if our, our, our agencies find that if a, if a young person is out of school and not working, they're on a pathway to disaster. The, two co the combination of those two things, being out of school and not working, is a, there's really bad outcomes at, at the other end of that. So we've got to make sure that kids are staying in school, and if they're not staying in school, that we go back in and train and remediate against these bad outcomes so that they can end up in a job. And that that is, I, I believe actually that is one of the defining challenges, not just in Prince George's County, but across the country, is um, intervening on opportunity youth across the country, women, boys, doesn't make men, doesn't make any difference, um, where we can go in and support them and help them as if they have left school and if they don't have a job. And it's actually an audience really tough to connect to because you can't connect to them in school, you can't right. connect to them in a workforce, where do you go find them? And it's, it's a big challenge. I think that's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely right. And we notice uh, that bullying often leads to truancy. That uh, right. a number of young people who experience bullying in school stop coming to school. And, right. uh, and so I think. It's a spiral of negative behavior. A spiral of negative uh, behavior. And I think it can't be stated any more strongly that there is a pipeline um, from the children who are not in school directly to the prisons. Now at the summit there will be workshops for parents and guardians as well. Can you talk a little bit about that or what's going to be going on? Thank you. Actually there will be. Uh, we have a dual track and we want to make sure we include the parents as well. So we'll be talking to the parents about raising healthy teens. But we will also be talking about Darkness to Light is uh, another organization that will yeah. be present that day to talk about um, child sexual assault and recognizing the signs of child sexual assault. One in four young girls and one in six boys will be sexually assaulted before their 18th birthdays. And for me, that is just astonishing. Yeah. So we will have an opportunity to speak with the parents that day um, regarding recognizing the signs of child sexual abuse. What are, uh, go ahead. Uh, no, no, another program that will be highlighted at the, at the, at the conference will be uh, prevention of teen, uh, of, of date violence, which is really on the rise, uh, again, not just in Prince George's co County, but around the, around the nation. Um, and uh, giving women tools uh, to prevent uh, date, date violence and, and abuse uh, through relationships. And I, I think that'll be a, a very important part of what we do that day. Yeah, and speaking of relationships, how important is it for mentoring relationships? Um, I know some of the organizations that you're involved in and some of the work you have mentors. Big Brothers Big Sisters is maybe the best example. Uh, they do a terrific job of connecting one-on-one. -on -one. If, you, if you can't get one-on-one -on -one with our teens, with our, with our young adults, 
you're probably not going to connect. I mean, it's wonderful to have advertising programs and internet access, but if you can't go face to face with our with our youth, you're just not going to connect. And so people like Big Brothers Big Sisters bring that asset to this to this event for us. Right, you got to have a role model. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Just like this. <laughs> no. Right. Okay, so thank you so much. You know, this uh, this sounds like it's going to be a great summit. Where is, where's the summit taking place? Prince George's Community College, uh, September 29th. It starts at 8 a.m. and will go until 3 p.m. and it will be a wonderful day. We encourage uh, people to call our office with children 13 to 18 years old. Now, we're going to do this again in March for 18 to 25, but this will be 13 to 18 year olds. Um, please call the state's attorney's office. We're still registering. It's completely free. Um, to the parents and to the children. We'll be serving breakfast and lunch. Plus, we have great giveaways. Best Buy is a, a sponsor. We're giving away Nick Nooks, I'm sorry, Nooks and flat screen televisions and iPods, and it's going to be just a great day. Okay, we're just going to go on a little break and we'll come back with you. And thank you so much for being here. Good to see Mr. you. Mr. Hanbury. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, stay tuned. Um, when we come back, the state's attorney talks some more about the issues in the county and what kind of future she'd like to see for Prince George's. Stay tuned.